Except for when I got out. Meryl Meisler first stepped Almost off the subway at the intersection of Myrtle and Wyckoff Avenue in December of 1981. She was about to start a full-time job as a public school art teacher in the neighborhood that hadn't recovered from the riots four years earlier. Almost everything is boarded up. I, I don't think I even saw anyone on the street. Look, I think it was a war the week before, and it, it was just quiet. And I, in my head, I thought, perhaps the other art teacher was killed. The neighborhood itself was obviously traumatized, but there was unbelievable resilience in the children. Here are these kids coming in every day, and they, they were beautiful. They really had a lot of pride and a lot of passion. After years of documenting the 70s disco club scene in Manhattan, Meisler decided she needed to document what she was seeing on the streets of Bushwick. I bought one of the first cheap point-and-shoot cameras, and just walking to school, from the subway and walking back, I would take pictures of things that I found uplifting. I usually do ask permission photographing. And most people say yes, because I think I saw I was recognizing something fabulous about them. Certainly I saw my share of drug addicts and alcoholics. That's not, that's not what I want to photograph. I, I look for people that I thought were fantastic or a, a building that told the story, and the lighting was part of it as well. There was so much natural light. There was gorgeous natural light. It took looking at the disco work now, like I was in an artificial environment at nighttime with a flash, and here like, ah, oh, this beautiful natural light. Meisler kept her photo project private for decades. In 2007, she showed some of them in local galleries, and then she got the idea to pair them with her images from the 1970s nightclubs. I just knew immediately, it's, it's a tale of two cities. This was my experience, and this is how these worlds came together, and this, this is how they need to be. It was like a concentration game. I saw an image in my negatives, I said, match, match set, started putting match sets together. There was like no time to think, just do it fast. Grace Jones standing like that, match with the girl in the graduation outfit. I knew that, match set immediately. And when I saw the Studio 54 pictures, because I'd never really looked through these at all. And I said, was this? I said, oh, that goes with the kids. As we retrace Meisler's commute from the Myrtle Wyckoff station up Palmetto Street, she's still taking pictures. Do you mind if I take a picture of you meditating? It's okay. was a perfect example of how friendly people are. I'm wondering if having been a teacher um, gave you that in for the community, because some of those shots, it almost looks as if the kids are, even if they didn't know you, seem somehow familiar with you. If you were in a neighborhood for a while, mm -hmm. you see kids grow up and you, you know, then you know the next generation, you know, their cousins, you know. Yeah. It's part of being a part of a school community. Meisler never tires of talking about Bushwick or the kids and the families she came to know. Meisler retired from teaching and now lives in Manhattan, but she still returns to Bushwick. This is a place where I came to do a job and found myself. I found myself. Okay? I found myself. <laughs> Meisler hopes to follow up A Tale of Two Cities by tracking down and photographing as many of the young people that appeared in her photos to find out what became of the kids of disco-era Bushwick. In the Bushwick section of Brooklyn, I'm Jenna Flanagan for Metrofocus 24-7.